Baris Island. Over the centuries, this tiny island in the Gadar Sea has given rise to numerous myths and legends. It is called the Island of Ancient Mysteries and has been the subject of much speculation over the years. It is the island of General Magnus's disappearance, and it is here that Ash and his companions now venture. Welcome to Chapter 2. An Island of Madness. This is the same video recording as the previous video. I had to edit it to chop it in half because, um, yeah, there's no save point in between at all. You get used to this. If I remember right, every chapter transition is like this. Here we are, the island's only city. I'm pretty sure there's something wrong with this place. Hey, Lobers. Interlopers are here. Kill the interlopers. Kill them. Kill them all. Uh, not exactly what I'd call a warm welcome. A warm reception. Ooh, there's an evil and malicious force coming from those statues. being controlled by those statues. Destroy the statues, but spare the villagers. Well, that's easy to say, but what if they attack us? They shouldn't be able to climb more than three steps. If we push those blocks in the right way, we might be able to avoid killing any of them. This is the battle that I refer to as the hardest battle in the game, by the way. So you notice that defeat is death of ash and villagers. So technically, all we need to do is protect one villager to survive. You will notice that the villagers have the same stats as the <clears throat> the claws from the um, ant dune battle thing. So they're going to die if they attack. Unless if we get lucky and they miss. Or we miss their counterattack. They have a farm tool as a weapon. They're wearing clothes for equipment. The reason why this is the hardest battle of the game is that every villager counts as losing one of your own characters. So we have to pay a monetary penalty for any villager that dies. I have never succeeded at doing this battle with zero deaths. I don't know if it's possible to succeed it. No, wait. Actually, I think the last time I did do this battle with zero deaths, but I didn't quite have this party. Um, this will be the last video that I'm recording during this section. I'm going to be released, and you notice that I released these videos a little bit faster than I did the previous couple of weeks. That's because I'm going to be stopping here and asking for some advice slash suggestions. Well, advice is not the right word. I am taking an opinion poll. Uh, I'll get to that more later. But, long story short, our objective is to kill these evil statues. You will notice that they count as healer class, which means that they are in fact weak against swords. They also have the spell Piercing Light, which is an offensive spell. So, we need to kill those without killing villagers. The key to this is Elanai. Elanai is MVP by far on this battle. Like, it's not even close for anyone else. Because all Eel and I has to do is, let's say there's a villager here. Eel and I walks up and paralyzes the villager there. Now the villager can't attack, or counterattack for that, or be counterattacked for that matter, and nobody else can get through because Eel and I is standing directly in front. That's how you block things off in them. But you have to get lucky. Also, there's an object here, and I believe I actually need it. Double checking really fast. Uh, uh, south side by gap in 
bent. Is that the south side? No, that's the north side. Sweet. I don't need that one. That's the mushroom. What I need is... Here. So... Yeah, you can barely see it because of the pixelation. But from this angle, you can see it. The little crater there, that's actually what I need. So that one won't be too hard to get to. So, what we need to do is run. Unfortunately, we can't go that far. We are unpromoted. Our archers are going to be really useful for taking out the evil statues, too. This is probably going to be the battle that we're going to be I'm guessing. Although you don't get... Uh, actually, I'm getting a decent amount of XP still. Never mind. Right, he's lower level. I should have cast it on Ash. And eh, he's still leveled up, so it's fine. So Hux is down to one or er, ten. And he got a new spell, Cure. Oh, yeah, did Ash get a new spell? I don't think so. Kira, I think you can hit from here. Yes. You're going to be taking out that statue. Really? I one-shot the other one, but not that one. Aren't you the same power as Diego? Attack 39. Attack 39. Yeah, 39, 37, 35. You two should be identical-ish. Yeah, plus one defense, minus one agility. Yeah. I don't think I can magic. Take it out. Nope. Barely out of range. Looking at... 75 XP to level up? You need 17. Okay, yeah, Kira's gonna level up. Eel and I might not, but I'm less concerned about Eel and I, to be honest. Okay. The reason why we're shoving everybody else down here is because we can block that off and regroup. But we need to do it fast, because otherwise the villagers are gonna come in, and the moment they're here, I can't push that block uh, uh, box in the way. No villagers can reach me, so that's not a big deal. And I do not care about that treasure chest. That treasure chest is a trap. So the AI script for this battle for the villagers... Oh, um, the statues can't move for reference. Um, the villagers will attempt to move to wherever is open. The reason why I moved Hux where I did, because now they can't enter. So pushing actually takes up movement for reference. Everybody into here. Here you go. Getting into Kira. You're going to finish off that stupid thing. And level up. Here is now level 10. That's good. Can 
can I... Eli you know needs to be the rear one, basically. So, part of the reason why I didn't want Eli and I leveled up before is that she only has 24 attack. It is actually possible for her to whiff against a villager. Barely. Because Hux already has 30 attack. This is also the reason why I didn't equip the better weapons on my mages, for reference. It's this battle. Because it's theoretically possible for them to not kill. Damage is generally attack minus defense in this game. It's not... There's not like a multiplier or anything like that involved. There's some randomness, but it's attack plus or minus a little bit minus defense. So, you'll notice that all the villagers are now clearing out of that area. So what we want to do is basically prep us to push this box from there to here to stop the villagers from getting through. And team I'm in the rear are basically here as taunts. Oh, um, double checking. So yeah, their defense is eight. They have 13 hit points. And I think Eel and I would actually still one-shot them. I think Eel and I needed to be one level lower. But I didn't want to have Eel and I be that low of a level. Okay, how far can you move? Okay, you're not moving that far. Got it. I can still have Eel and I move back. Okay, who has the best move? Can be really hard to tell. Um, I think it's the soldier likes. Wait, no, that's right. I remember how this needs to be done. But we, what we want is basically to have Hux be the one in people around. I'm pretty sure I'm out of the range of their evil gaze thing of doom. And yeah, I won't be able to fire my bow build them this time. Ash gets to stay there. Email, I was just go duo again. So yeah, we need to make sure that that group of people clear out of that area before we do anything. We do not want them there. They will take the shortest path possible to reach us. And right now, that shortest path is going through that large area in the middle. This is key. We need to be able to keep that up. Okay, we're clear. We're gonna take a save here. And I'm going off of memory for how to push this for reference. So hopefully I remember correctly. I'd rather get hit. Oh crap, I have to push this way first. Ah, uh, I should have had up there instead. I done goofed. Oh, that's so annoying. And that one can hit me. Why I saved. I need to swap Ash and Hux, basically. Which I'll do this turn. For some reason, I was thinking the opening was here, not here. I don't know why. go. And let's move these two. So this gives us less time, unfortunately. I was hoping to have it done this turn. It's not going to be done this turn. It's going to be next turn. That should be okay. Thank you. 
By taking this extra turn, it also gives us an extra turn of dealing with the villagers, for reference. So even if we don't get the box in the right spot this round, we're fine. Let's save before I do anything else. Character Dram. Yes. All right, Diego. Your turn to push. 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 Here. Fire. I don't think you're going to kill it, but that's fine. Yeah, height difference. But I get to jump up and down and live, reach level 10. Is good. Uh, nobody else is going to be able to reach this turn, it looks like. But Hux can get the moon pie! Moon pie. I've got nothing. Just letting you know. No idea why it's a moon pie. Maybe the creator really likes moon pies? I don't know. Okay, the main thing that we're going to want to make sure is that we're not going to block that thing. Remembering this battle being a lot harder than it is. Because so far it doesn't look like this is going to be that big of a problem. So everybody's going to move up toward here because this is now the closest route. Which is fine, because I'm going to block it off, which is going to cause them to move back around. Maybe it's hard because I was trying to um, get all the treasure on the map. That could be. So yeah, you'll notice that everybody's moving back now. But, unfortunately, we're going to get hit with a piercing light. And it hurts. 32 damage is not enough. Okay. All right, we're blocking now. Oh. I was thinking I'd be able to reach and apparently not. We're gonna stand there, though. What is your attack range, Dark Star? Four. Two, three, four. I'm not gonna be able to reach you if you're standing where Hux is. Drat. Okay, I'm gonna have to have somebody else hit it. Uh, Kira, can you reach? Oh, you're also level 10. Eli is the only non level 10 character. Huh, okay. I wasn't expecting that. What's up? Oh, really? Means Eel and I is actually going to have the duty of dealing with this goober because I can't reach otherwise. Eel, Clint. And I please move to where the moon pie was. More and more email coming out today. Here you can stand there. My goal is to have everybody level 10 by the end of the battle, by the way. Alright. Now that I've pissed off the villagers, they're gonna start running around the back. Because it's the only valid route forward. Unfortunately, those two are gonna be the problem. So I'm going to need to hurry up, basically. I think I have enough time to do what I'm planning on doing. 
This is not the type of battle that you are slow and cautious on. This is speed the hell up, because you can't pull boxes. You can only push them. Which is unfortunately not going to do that much damage. Uh, slow down. Yeah, 13. I'm going to need three turns of spell casting to kill it. it. Is not good. Unless if I can hit from here. Nope. The fence is blocking him. And I assume here it's the same problem. Yeah. I would have needed to have pushed the box over to here and stand on it and attacked. All right, Eel and I. Counting on you. What is the range on Mystic Shield anyway? Uh, four. Okay. Two, three, four. Oh, right. I want to buff, not... Uh, Mystic Shield doesn't do anything against magic. But weird that Mystic Shield sound effect is off by a little bit. Kira, move forward. Frog, move forward. Ash, forward. And turn. Neil and I is going to take a hit, I think, because I think their range is four also. Yep. I thought so. So yeah, I do less dam- I, yeah, I do less damage than they do, but I have more hit points, so it's fine. Fairy Light can only hit self. The next level of ability that can hit both. Uh, I still have two more. Can I survive two more hits? Yeah. I'm not concerned about the damage Elanai is going to take. The only thing I am concerned about is that Elanai will end up getting hit by the stupid villagers. And I only have one more turn of dealing with that. Everybody else, rush. You're dead. You're dead. Might as well, because nobody's going to be damaged otherwise. But Diego can... Uh, yeah, nobody's going to be damaged. Yeah, this is going to be the... Or, sorry, this is going to be the last one. I'm not going to concern myself by getting the mushroom here. Uh, it's possible for me to get that treasure chest, but it's obnoxious, and I don't think there's anything good in it. Here. Um, Herb of Mage Oil. One of the two. Irrelevant. I can buy both. I'm more concerned about not killing any villagers. I think those two seem to be moving.
Oh, they're getting stuck, that's why. Okay, how close are you getting, Nick? Pretty darn close, but not quite there. Your movement is four, five. That's the problem. Neil and I's movement's only four. This is gonna suck. Dark Star, you get rid of you, and I think that's enough for Elanai to level up. I hope so, because I uh, don't want to deal with anybody below level 10. Please just level up. Dang it. How close are you? You still need 35 more XP. Okay, you were not going to level up anyway. Lux, go ahead and use your last MP. Everybody else. Get ready to rush. Notice that it spins under them when they haven't gone yet, and it stops spinning afterward. I don't know why it took me that long to notice that, but whatever. Okay. Those two are gonna be the problem. Parody screwed. How far can you get? You can get up to there. Yes, I am already screwed. And since there's two of them, I can't just paralyze. You don't have enough movement to get on top of that box. Push the box, maybe? Let's see if I have a way of recovering. Otherwise, I'm just going to eat. Penalty, it's not that big. I can't even get on top. Yep, two of them can get me from that angle. Okay. But so what I should have done was gotten closer than pushed myself into there. Although then I'd have these villagers. I'm pretty sure I'm screwed either way. Hi, it's in. Ah! It's okay. No kitty cam, but you can see. Ah! I grumble. That's not the save I wanted to hit. One moment. Now I'm hit the right save. We haven't met her yet. Let me get to our... Ah! Thinking of... Cat! Cat! Crap. Hold on a moment. Cat hit reload. There we go. Kissin Kitty wants attention now. Okay. Nothing I can do to stop. Unless if I win this turn, not gonna happen, but. Unless? Or, you know, I can just win this turn. Okay, that's fine. I can deal without the.
No deaths. That's good. Didn't get all the items, though. Yeah, it's got to be items plus no deaths. That was hard for me. Everybody's fighting. Caitlin I has her fists up. We destroyed the statues, but they keep coming. Don't be so sure. Take a look. Uh, oh, what's where are we? What are going on? What was I doing? I feel like I just woke up for a horrible nightmare. Haha! <laughs> well, I'm glad you're better now. I just where one of them had a note about having a dirt taste in their mouth or something. As soon as decided that he has finished his interference? No. He's coming back. One moment. I have something important, which is turning on kitty cam. And bringing a kitty to kitty cam. There we go. Thank you for saving us. What happened to you anyway? It all started three months ago. It started when soldiers came from the mainland to do an investigation. That must have... Sorry, that must have been Magnus. Yes, that was his name. Magnus. He said they came to investigate? Yes. There are ruins of an ancient citadel deep with inside this island. Apparently, they were already here when our ancestors first arrived. But we've always steered clear of them. Well, why is that? There are many scary legends about the ruins. Some say that they can see flickering lights or hear a strange wailing. When Magnus told us why he had come, we tried to convince him not to go. He just laughed at all of our warnings. A few weeks went by as usual, and then one night... Flashback time. Mayor! Monsters! A whole bunch of them! What are you talking about? Ah! What in hell's name are you? You. I know you! Ah! Yes, we totally needed a flashback for that sound effect. What is it? Isn't that the second time I've said that statement? Is that a scene? You don't remember anything after that. That's right. However, that demon that appeared before us, I'm certain it was General Magnus, even though he looked completely different. Seems hard to believe, and yet... Oh, we have to go to the ruins and check things out. I know it's dangerous, but there's no other way! And Eli is just silent. This is one of my favorite village names, by the way. Oh, that's right. I do not bond to buy equipment because it's promotion time and equipment changes based off of how I'm promoting people. So it's time to talk about that, So let's do that. So I'm going to save first. This is going to be the save point for the video. There we go. We are chapter two, scene one. Um, so if you're only here for the plot of the video, you can go ahead and stop at this point. However, for those of you who are still watching, I have an opinion question for you. So, I tried and failed to try to find a way of doing a randomizer for this game. It's way more complicated to do than Shining Force 2, and that was already super complicated. I can't even find the data in the game for each of the characters. And I have a hunch the reason for that is that it's hard-coded. Like, as in, it's not... Elanai is a mage, it is... 
This is Elanai. This is where Elanai can promote. I don't know that for sure, and I also haven't found anybody trying to find that online. I even tried decompiling the game, but uh, I'm not good at reading results from decompilers. But we need to talk promotion, and this is the point where I want people in the audience to give me a suggestion. So, um, level 10 is the first promotion level, and it's also the promotion level that we get to choose our path. Well, other than Ash. Ash, we actually only have one choice, which is champion. Uh, the next video will end up being all the promotions, so I'm not even going to promote Ash to champion right now. But Clint, for instance, can promote to either a swordsman or a guardsman. Swordsmen are good with swords. You know, swords. Um, they are... We've seen what Clint is like. He's relatively high mobility, uh, high chance of dodging, and reasonably powerful attack. Guardsmen, on the other hand, are armor class, so they're going to be slower, they're going to have more hit points, they're going to have higher defense, but a lower chance of blocking, if I remember correctly. Might be the same, I'm not sure. But the more important part is that they're slower, so they don't move as far. Guardsmen are harder to deal with, in my mind. I have played a game with all guardsmen, I have played a game with all swordsmen. I'll let you know right now, the all swordsmen game was way easier. Also, it means that they're weak against magic as being weak against hawks. Speaking of, we can either promote Diego to be a bowman, which is the same thing that Archer is right now, only better. So we're going to have a longer range on our attacks. We still have the same movement. We still have the same defense chance. We still have... It's basically just Archer plus, except that we have a longer range to attack. Hawk Knight, on the other hand, we give up our bow entirely. We are no longer a ranged unit. We are instead a hawk which is a flying unit with a spear. Hawks are some of the most powerful classes in the game. They're the third most powerful class in the game, in my mind. Second is the mage, like, highest level mage, and first is a spoiler. But anyway, um... We are going to have... Oh, sorry, um, I'm about to start spoiling some things. They're really minor things for reference. Also, there's no kitties here, so I'm going to turn off kitty cam again. Um, they're really minor things for reference that I'm spoiling. I'm just spoiling things that are in the manual. Okay, so in the game... Oh, actually... Uh, no, no. So, for reference, for slashy type, there's going to be three of them in the game. We have two right now, we are missing one. There are a total of three in the game, and that's it. And we're going to be getting the third one very quickly. I think it might even be the next battle. So, that's it. For archers, we, there are four of them in the game. And yes, characters that we gain in the game that ga are gained after this point are not promoted. We have the option of promoting in the range that we want. We currently have two of the archers. We're going to get the third one very soon, and the fourth one we've got a ways. So, that will impact what percentage of archers versus hawks that we have. Have I played a game with all hawks? No. Have I played a game with all archers? No. I always do a combination of them. I have played each of the characters as each of the classes before. Um, in my opinion, Diego looks best as an archer rather than as a hawk. But hawks generally look cool anyway. Um, Eel and I. Eel and I can't actually promote yet. But Eel and I's promotion is going to look very similar to Huxley's which is that she can promote to either, uh, in her case, it's going to be a wizard or a monk. Huxley can promote to a bishop or a monk. Mage slash bishop is basically the same thing as they are now, but they get more spells. That's it. It's just, hey, look, you're as a bishop, you're going to get more healy spells. As a wizard, you're going to get more blasty spells. Monk is interesting. Monk is... Fist class, which is the alternative sword class. Um, they're basically weaker versions of the sword class, but with magic. Those of you that have watched me go through Archer Force 2 or No Shining Force 2, you will recognize this as ninjas. There's a reason why I keep referring to Huxley as Ninja Master Hux, and that's because the last game that I played, I promoted him as a monk, which the next promotion beyond monk is ninja. And he was ludicrously powerful for a melee unit somehow. Um... Monks have a blend of spells. So if I promoted 
Huxley to be a monk, Huxley will start getting offensive magic. If I promoted Elanai to a monk, she will start gaining healing magic. Now, fun thing about the Sega Saturn release of this game is that not every one of the same class gets the same magic anymore. So if I have so there are two mages in the game for reference and two priests in the game. If I promote both mages to be a wizard, they will actually have slightly different spells. I think it's one or two spells that are swapped between them. And the same thing with monks. They don't all have the same magic. I don't know the details because I've intentionally avoided it other than, oh, they actually have different magic? Holy crap, that sounds awesome. Um, That's something to keep in mind. Also, I'd noticed... Um, on this screen, you actually see what they look like on the PS1 version, if I remember right. Kira. Kira, once more, is an archer. There are four archers in the game. Uh, archer is, in fact, the most prevalent class. That's why I was making the Archer Force 2 jokes. Um, in my mind, Kira looks better as a Hawk Knight than as a Bowman. But she looks pretty badass as both. It's the other two that are much more obviously Hawk Knight, based off of their sprites. And based off of their background, for that matter. Um, I don't want to give details as to what the characters are, but their backstories kind of indicate more gadgeteer style, rather than, hey, look, I use bows. Uh, Kiri's backstory actually kind of gears toward both. Um, we haven't seen any of Kiri's backstory yet. And Diego's backstory gears more toward just being a playboy. But really an archer. Um, finally, we have Grog. Once more, Grog can become a swordsman or a guardman. There are three total swordsmen in the game. Um, Grog is more geared toward being a guardsman, I think. But honestly, he looks worse. <laughs> uh, the third swordsman probably looks to be the best guardsman appearance-wise. I don't think it actually matters at all between them. And I don't even think the stats matter. I mean, let's take a look. So, let's see. Clint is 50-50-40. Grog is... 49-46-40. So, Grog has six more defense and one fewer attack than Clint. Okay. Fascinating. Oh, um, the reason why I'm holding off on equipment is that their equipment will actually change when they promote. Like, for instance, archers, if they promote to Hawk Knight, will no longer have a bow and will need a spear. So there's no reason for me to buy a bow when I'm going to have a spear as my weapon. Um, same thing with monks. Monks use claws and other glove-type weapons as opposed to staves. So there's no reason to buy new equipment that way. Um, if I remember correctly, Hawk Knights use a blend of heavy and light equipment, whereas archers just use light equipment and soldiers just use heavy equipment. I'm not 100% certain on that one. Uh, finally, um, I think I can probably stop here. So the question to the people who are watching, basically, how should I promote? I am going to have a total of, actually, hold on, let me get a diagram out. All right, so this above here is a diagram of what we're talking about. The question marks are characters we haven't seen yet, so I'm not going to be revealing who they are or anything like that. Um, but these are the characters. Uh, so there are a total of four swords folk, but one of them's Ash, and as you saw, oh, you can't see at the moment because I have it locked. Um, do just hide that for a moment. So as you saw, Ash doesn't actually have a choice. So when it comes to these promotions, no matter what, we're going to have at least one swords person. It'll be Ash. Um, having said that, we will have three other characters, two of which are currently up there, um, and the third and the last one we're going to be getting very shortly, uh, that can be promoted to either armor class or sword class. 
once more. Sword class, I think they do the same amount of damage between the two. It's possible that armor class actually does more, I'm not sure. But the main thing is that armor class has higher defense and lower... Uh, so, higher defense, lower maneuverability. Much lower, in fact. It's the slowest class in the game, even slower than the priests. Um, archers, there are four of them. Two of them we have right now. One of them will be getting very shortly. One of them will be getting much later in the game. Um, when it comes to our archers, there are a total of four of them. So we can have some combination of either four archers, four air folk, or combination thereof. Okay. Uh, the priest and mage one's a little weirder because they can both promote to monk. And we have seen one of each so far. We're going to be getting another priest very shortly. Uh, we will be getting another mage a little while later. It's going to be a bit. So... Eh. Um, personally, outside of the secret class, um, the most powerful class in the game is the... Whatever the Archmage class is. I don't... It might actually be called Archmage. Grand Wizard... Archmage, something like that. Um, in any case, uh, Elanai is one of the most powerful characters in the game. So I usually don't promote either of the mages to be monks by virtue of that. Having said that, all options are on the table. I may grab a bit. Um, over with priests. Priests, I will... Oh, rephrase. Um, so the main thing that you want when it comes to mages is they have area of effect attacks. Ninjas don't to speak of. Uh, ninjas, the best area of effect that they have is surrounding themselves, so they might be able to, say for instance, hit everybody right next to them, and that's it. Uh, High-level mages can hit a good chunk of the battlefield. Like, 20 to 40 percent of it, depending on what map we're talking about. So, yeah, th there's a lot to be said about having a high-level mage. Um, healers, it's a similar type of situation. Healers can heal very long-range healing at higher levels. Monks can heal around them, and that's it. A uh, highest-level healer can actually heal the entire battlefield. Monks cannot do that. They can just heal a good chunk of the battlefield. Um, however, I believe monk healing is area of effect, and regular healing is not frequently area of effect. I think the highest levels are... I don't remember. I don't want to look it up. Uh, it's possible monks have unique spells. Well, I know they do, but... Um, unique powers in this version of the game compared to others? I don't know. But these are in... Uh, that way. Darn it. These are, in general, the things that we're talking about. Let me know in the comments what you might want me to do. Also, keep in mind that while, yes, there are 12 characters in the game, that doesn't mean we're going to have all 12 members of our party present at the time. That'll be for later. Um... This is not a game where you have to switch people in and out of a party. So if we have all 12 characters and they are all plot available, that means we're having 12 characters in that combat. In fact, there's actually one that has 13. I don't remember if we have all of our characters, but anyway. Um, so yeah. And if people want to see what they look like post-promotion, because even their portraits change during promotion. I should mention that. Um, let me know, and I can always record a video of just nothing but promotions. Okay, this has been long enough. I'll talk to you later, Nat. Bye! Um.